The last example treat a specific topic where we used correlation indices for a specific problematic. The question appears when one aggregates micro networks like multinational firms by city. When one makes the sum of linkages by city, for example with degree, one suppose implicitly that there are no relation at all between the different firms located inside the city. On the other hand, when well calculated a betweenness centrality uh, be, uh, of the city's linkages, one supposes implicitly that it exists all the internal link relations between the different firms located inside the same city, permitting to pass from a network to another one without any friction or cost. Between these two extremes, one can wonder how to evaluate the linkages between firms inside each city. So these linkages in the business and economic theory can be inside firms or between firms in intra or intersector, and they are organized in vertical or horizontal complementarity between firms, their relation can be direct or indirect. Indirectly, for example, firms share local resources, services, or institutions. All these relations compose the agglomeration economies that we can summarize by the sharing, matching, learning of Duranton and Puga. So we propose to use empirical evidence in order to evaluate how different networks of firms are usually close to each other. We took six different worldwide firms from two sectors. Three firms from agro-food industry and three firms of automobile sector. We looked to the regular collocation of the network. More it is high, more there is a high likelihood that these enterprises have direct or indirect linkages inside cities. We could implement three levels of correlation like in the previous example, at the level of nodes, of links, or the entire network with co-op correlation. We saw that correlation of links or on the whole matrices ask much more condition than the nodes' correlations. But coming back to our initial question, we expect regularities of collocation of firms in order to reveal the agglomeration economies they can produce together. So, nodes' correlations are the right choice or in order to evaluate the average propensity to create agglomeration economies. So we correlated the nodes of the six networks, that is, that is a symmetric matrix here. All the correlations are positive, but with different levels of similarities of collocations. The higher correlation is between Kraft Food and Unilever, who share essentially the same market all over the world. Then we used this person correlation indexes in order to weight the linkage inside cities in the network. So for uh, a link uh, inside each uh, company, the linkages are one, and with different other company, linkages are 0 0.76 or 0 0.30 seven or point eighteen and so on. As the example here of Amsterdam we evaluated all the linkages of each firm inside each city and we calculated a weighted degree and a weighted between a centrality for each firm so for each of these nodes that are in a city or of course they have also there. Name. 
Then for each city, we calculate that left, uh, the sum, the mean, and the maximum of all companies inside each city for weight degree and weighted between a centrality. We wondered which index of this one could better reflect the centrality of actors of uh, uh, at the level of each city because as we linked all of the firms together inside each city, their centrality reinforced each other and demultiplied the summary and the sum. So the discussion lead to choose the maximum weighted between a centrality which indicates our city has at least one very central firm in the whole network of cities supported eventually by other firms inside the city or firms in its own group network. Then we compared this result implemented at the micro level to the one more classically calculated on the linkages aggregated at the meso level by city here at right. So we have the total degree, the in degree, out degree, and between the centrality. So we compared the maximum weighted between the centrality here with the uh, general between a centrality calculated classically. And when we correlated these two measures, so maximum between a centrality of firms by cities, a new measure, and the classical between a centrality, we can see that it is quite correlated at 0 0.8. But some cities have a relative advantage with the new micro me measure. These cities are the ones who are above the red, the red line here. At the opposite, cities below the red line lose centrality with the new measure. We demonstrate that the cities having better results with the new measure are in general emerging cities with some actors quite well positioned in the multinational firms' networks. At the opposite, the cities below the lines are in general second tier cities with lower important actors. So, to summarize, the choice of quap correlation or Pearson correlation depends on the problematics. But do not forget that it is important in your problematic as well that to take into account that classical statistic correlation imply independence of observations. If we, you want to take into account the dependence of observation, you better take the correlation that integrates these dependencies. <laughs>